NFL running backs are on average 5 feet 10 inches tall. This makes them the shortest position in the league, even compared to kickers and punters. For the most part, running backs don't have a huge range in height. When you look at the 15 backs who rushed for 1,000 yards in 2022, 11 of them were within an inch of the league average height. But like anything else, there is always outliers. We've seen tall, bruising backs who've dominated with their sheer physical presence. Right, they thought Sean Springs was not only going to play, but he was going to spark. Came out before the game and they said no. Meanwhile, Jacob says no, you're not going to stop me. And we've seen the tiniest of dudes tear up defenses with their low center of gravity combined with insane shiftiness. This is Sproles again. Right side, first down and more. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. So in today's video, we will look at all those outliers both in today's NFL and historically. And ultimately, we'll decide which is best. Now really quickly, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, SeatGeek. With over 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app with over 28 million downloads. With football season in full swing, there are great college and pro games on a weekly basis. And seeing USC's reigning Heisman winner Caleb Williams while he's still in college is a bucket list game for me. Before you know it, football season will be over, and you don't want to miss out. SeatGeek puts all the tickets across the web in one place, making sure that you get a good deal. And every ticket is rated on a scale from 1 to 10. So look for the green dots. Green means good and red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code KTO for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app. First, looking at the tallest backs in 2023, just around 97 backs made final rosters, and only three of them are six foot two or taller. Also, it's worth noting that while some guys are listed at six foot two or even six foot three, their actual heights are usually shorter when you find the exact measurements from the combine. Cordero Patterson is right at six foot two or just slightly below that, and he's a unique case because he was drafted as a receiver in 2013. As a four-time All-Pro return man, there's no question that Patterson is gifted with speed, vision, and elusiveness. But receiver was never a great fit for him in the NFL. After eight seasons of underwhelming receiver play for a first-rounder, Atlanta picked him up and decided to try him at running back instead. This proved to be the best use for his talent offensively, as he averaged nearly five yards a carry in 2022. Now, for the tallest backs in the current NFL, it's a tie. Both Latavius Murray and Derrick Henry are just under six foot three, according to their combines and pro days. Let's start with Murray. Formerly an under the radar sixth round pick, Murray burst onto the scene his first few years in the league, earning Pro Bowl honors back in 2014. While he may not possess the elusiveness of some other running backs, his blend of power, vision, and surprising speed for his size have made him a well-rounded and dependable player for nearly a decade. At age 33, Murray is the oldest running back in the league and is still scoring touchdowns. Now, for the bigger and scarier running back, Derrick Henry has everything that made Latavius Murray a good back, just at another level. Most bruising power backs come in around 220 to 225 on average, and to throw on an extra 30 pounds on top of that is absolutely frightening. But there's usually a caveat with that extra weight. Looking back, one of the concerns about Henry entering the NFL was the problem people see with taller and bigger backs. I remember videos going around back in 2016 where Henry possessed slow feet and drills. When a running back lacks the quick feet and shiftiness to make the proper cuts in the NFL, and they get stuffed up before the play even gets going. But of course, because of all his other freak physical skills, Derrick Henry overcame this. 15, stiff arm, 20, 25, 30, 40, stiff arm, 50, 40, 30, he's on his feet, big chase, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Titans, 99 yards! It was like from that moment, he went from a pretty good NFL running back to a total machine. Henry's known for his punishing running style, and maybe most famously, his stiff arm.
but honestly, the most shocking part of his skill set to me is how impressive his top end speed is. To move like that at 6'3", 250 just doesn't make sense. But anyways, let's transition to the shortest running backs in the current NFL. Great cut by Deuce Vaughn, and this is what you want to do. When you have a defender one-on-one, -on -one, he had two defenders spit out of trouble. Hurts gets it out to Boston Scott. One-on-one, -on -one, good move, makes a man miss, and another, and another. Watch number seven right there. Freezes him back inside. There's a few guys coming in at five foot seven. The most noteworthy to this point being Devin Singletary and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Edwards Hilaire is a former first round pick who's seen his production decrease throughout his time in Kansas City. He just hasn't been the player that people expected coming out of LSU. For Singletary, his compact build and quick feet enable him to slip through small creases and find running lanes. With a couple of near 1,000-yard seasons, he's been the most successful of the 5'7 and under crew for running backs in the last few years. Coming in at 5'6 and 3 quarters, Boston Scott has made a decent impact at times in the last few years in Philadelphia, and is kinda in their third running back role currently. And now, for the shortest back in the league, we have the 5'5, 180-pound Deuce Vaughn. Vaughn is a sixth-round rookie backup in Dallas that has seen limited playtime so far. But the coolest aspect of his story is that his dad is a scout for the Cowboys, and he was the one to call his own son to tell him that he had been drafted. With his measurement at the combine of 5'5", Vaughn became the shortest running back ever drafted since the NFL began tracking the combine. We will just have to wait and see if he can make the most of his pro opportunity. Overall, amongst all the outliers, the taller backs have done better in the last few years mostly because Derrick Henry is such a freak of nature. But now, let's look at the outliers historically. Here's the spread of heights of the 31 Hall of Fame backs that played beyond 1950. It's interesting how many dudes were 6 foot 2 and above, considering you hardly see backs that tall now. Interestingly enough, the average height of running backs has shrunk over time. The average height for running backs has gone down a little over 2 inches, and it's the only position to have not gotten significantly larger in weight over the last 50 years. When it comes to taller backs nowadays, most coaches are going to go look at a player and think the following. Tall and lean? Okay, you're going to be a receiver or quarterback. Tall and thick and can move a little bit? Alright, you're a linebacker or tight end. Tall and just a behemoth of a man? Yeah, we're putting you on the line. The two tallest Hall of Fame backs are Larry Zonka and Eric Dickerson at 6 foot 3. Each of these guys were remarkably different. Zonka was a 240 pound bruising fullback who dominated with pure power. He was often difficult to bring down and would often plow through defenders on his way to gaining extra yards. Dickerson on the other hand was leaner and known for his unique upright running style, which allowed him to quickly scan the field and make decisive cuts. He was praised as a once-in-a-generation type of talent, considering his size and athletic ability. His long strides and burst of acceleration made him a threat to break away long runs on any given play. Also, Dickerson could shoulder massive workloads and was the best back in the league the moment he stepped on the field as a rookie. Now, looking beyond Hall of Famers, even when you take the entire history of the NFL, a running back over 6'3 is remarkably rare. I could only find four running backs that were claimed to be 6'4 and above. Calvin Hill was 6'4 and lean, and played for the Cowboys in the late 60s and early 70s. Hill made four Pro Bowls in his career. Sherman Smith was a decent starter for the Seahawks back when their franchise began, although I'm not entirely convinced that he was 6'4. Now, if you want to talk about a tank, Brandon Jacobs is 6'4 and his official combine weight was 267 pounds. I'd be scared to death trying to tackle this man. To Brandon Jacobs. He eludes one tackle. Jacobs, 10, 5, touchdown! Brandon Jacobs! Now, as for his NFL production, Jacobs never had any crazy numbers outside of his ridiculous 15 touchdown campaign in 2008. But this dude was a straight beast. The classic two running back system often has been coined Thunder and Lightning. Thunder is the big, bruising power back who gets the short yardage plays, and Lightning is the small, flashy, speedy guy who is utilized in a variety of ways, usually outside of the short yardage plays. That was what the Giants had in Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw. 
Overall, Jacobs had a few solid years in the league, but never made a Pro Bowl, although he probably deserved to in 2008. But more important than Pro Bowls, he played a pivotal role on two Super Bowl winning teams. Now, Jacobs is certainly the biggest modern running back, but the honor for the tallest goes to the 6'5", Burt Cohen. Cohen played for the Chiefs back in the 1960s, where he was mostly a backup, but did put together a pretty solid 1966 campaign where he had seven touchdowns and 5.4 yards per carry. Cohen will probably maintain this title forever as the NFL's tallest running back. Going back to our list of Hall of Famers, the shortest running back is Barry Sanders, who stands at 5'8". You could make a case that Sanders is the greatest back to ever do it. The guy was a straight magician on the field with the most remarkable combination of cutting ability, jukes, balance, vision, and acceleration that I've ever seen. He amazingly never had less than a thousand yards in a season and is one of the very few backs to have a career yards per carry of 5.0 or better. Outside of the Hall of Fame, there have been a handful of notable backs who were 5'7 and under. Amongst the 5'7 crew, Joe Morris comes out on top due to his incredible two-year run back in the 80s. He also had a huge playoff run in 1986 to help the Giants win the Super Bowl. You can see those elements of balance and burst in his game that you get with these short, explosive backs. Unfortunately, Morris's career was cut short by injuries. Now, moving down to 5'6", there's actually a decent amount of notable backs. The one that stands out the most from the others has to be Maurice Jones-Drew. He's the shortest back to ever lead the league in rushing yards. MJD possessed a compact and powerful build, which made him damn near impossible to bring down. Jones-Drew was known for his exceptional balance, agility, and lower body strength, which helped him break off long, impressive runs. Also, he was strong enough to shoulder large amounts of carries, which is unheard of for a guy this tall. The only other example was Charlie Tolar, who led the AFL in carries in 1962. Now, unlike MJD, Lionel James, Tariq Cohen, and Darren Sproles all possessed somewhat similar skill sets. And as we proceed lower and lower height-wise, you will see this style continue. These three all shined as change of pace backs, who excelled more so as a receiver out of the backfield, as well as in the return game. Darren Sproles is the most notable of the three as he played well the longest, playing in 14 NFL seasons and making a significant impact on three separate teams. Sproles was known for his exceptional speed, agility, and elusiveness, which made him a threat as both a runner and a receiver out of the backfield. Sproles earned a reputation as one of the most versatile players in the league and was the perfect complement to LaDainian Tomlinson back in the day. Continuing with that same type of player, the 5'5 Mac Heron was a surprise talent for the Patriots back in the early 70s. He went undrafted due to his height, but once the Patriots put him on the field, he was an immediate game changer. In 1974, he led the entire NFL in all-purpose yards, demonstrating his versatility and impact on the game. However, his career only lasted three total seasons. Now for the shortest back in NFL history, that honor goes to the 5'4", Buddy Young. Young played all the way back in the 1950s, but this doesn't make it any less crazy. He looked tiny out there, and this clip of him running without a helmet is just hilarious. Throughout his professional career, Young faced racial discrimination and adversity due to being one of the very few African-American players in the league at the time. Despite his challenges, Young persevered and became known as one of the most electrifying players of the era. When he played for the Colts, Young was so much faster than everybody that they actually staged a public event where he raced the team's mascot, a horse. So back to the original question, which is better, the tallest backs in NFL history or the shortest? Well, honestly, it would be more about your preference. There have been dominant backs of both types, but also you could argue that the potential of more big backs is diminished due to those players being placed in other positions to make better use of their talents. When linebacker Micah Parsons was entering the NFL, his college coach said that he would have been just as dominant if he played running back instead. You know, that kind of makes me upset because <laughs> I told him to let me play running back. He wouldn't let me play running. My true position growing up was running back. So you could have looked at me as like a Derrick Henry, really. I got some old clips I could pull up, you know what I'm saying? In high school, I averaged 11 yards a carry, so you know, I always had that nice little elusive yeah. stiff arm. 
So overall, if you had to choose, would you rather have a six foot four, 250 pound freight train or a five foot six, 180 pound Swiss army knife that can be used in a million different ways? My choice, give me the big fella. First and goal of the eight, Hynoski came in motion, Jacobs goes to the outside, Brandon Jacob oh, put a shoulder down. Oh, <laughs> that hurt all the way up here.